Okay, what we got here is a, uh, we're going to do a quick walk around on this 1937 uh, McCormick Daring International Harvester uh, T20 uh, crawler tractor. Uh, this one's going to go, it's actually up on eBay right now. I listed it last night. Uh, got a lot of other tractors and don't use this one much, so it's time to go. But uh, as you can see, um, it's a fairly large tractor. Uh, I'm about just under six foot and this thing comes up to my chest. It's a pretty big tractor. I think it weighs around 6,700 pounds, 6,700 and change. Uh, as you see, this one has all the sheet metal. There is uh, a couple of dings and dents here that can be pounded out pretty easily. A couple little tears in the metal there, but nothing big. But all the sheet metal is there and it's complete. Fuel tank inside and out is spotless. Beautiful, nice and smooth. This tractor came from Colorado. I've had it for about eight years, so uh, very little rust. All the rust is just like surface rust, nothing major. Um, it's got the uh, <clears throat> The dual tank, you put your, used to put the kerosene in here and the gasoline in there for starting, but now we just, just runs it straight on gasoline on the big tank. And like I said, this is just to cover the muffler here, so this is a place to store it right there, or uh, cover the exhaust when it's not in use. But uh, inside the tank is just as spotless. It's a, it's a beautiful tank, very, very clean inside. Uh, the fenders are all there. This. Uh, Exhaust elbow, I took off one of my F20s. That does not come with the tractor. I just put it on there to get the noise away while I do these videos uh, that I'm going to put up on YouTube. But anyway, <clears throat> fenders are all there. Some wrinkles in them here and there. Everything that's uh, it's solid. Very solid steel. Nothing rotted through. Um, everything can be banged out. The tracks are uh, pretty good. They've, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not sagging all the way down. Uh, so they were at one point in his life, but I don't know, this is pretty much the way I got it. Uh, the undercarriage has got some wear in it, but uh, it, it runs, turns, uh, everywhere I take it, never had a problem with it. Uh, the seat, as you can see, got a hole in there, I guess a mouse ate through it somewhere in its life. But it is a spring seat and a foam spring seat at the bottom. <coughs> uh, nice soft armrest here. You can see down here, this is the toolbox that actually pulls out from the back here. Flip your levers here and the little tool storage box, whatever you want to call it. Comes out from behind the seat. Okay, let's lock those back up. And uh, that's where your turning clutches are behind that those plates there. You have a power takeoff, which is in really good shape. Doesn't like it was used very much and it works fine. It engages and disengages, and you have a swinging drawbar here, um, so you can hitch up, uh, you know, do some log skidding out of the woods or pull a plow through the field, whatever you want. But you can adjust that drawbar side to side for hills or whatever. Um, <clears throat> again, there's some uh, little bit of welding and stuff here in the seat, but nothing that can't be straightened out pretty easily. Uh, it's all there, all the sheet metal, the fenders, everything's solid. <clears throat> okay fuel tank again and the hood usually the hoods and these are gone trashed rotted away or missing so this is all it's all here it's all solid these aren't the right catches here but somebody's put some springs on there to hold it down which they do they work but they're not correct uh okay the uh flip up the hood here and there's our engine um I'm pretty sure this is like uh, the same as a 1020 motor. And this one actually I think may have the high compression pistons in it because it came out of Colorado. They put the high altitude pistons in there. But it runs really good. Um, magneto there. And uh, you got a water pump up front, which the F20s don't have. Um, oil filter on this one, which is good. And uh, you can place to fill your oil there and your primer cups are in there. For the cold weather but never needed those uh radiators in really nice shape um has a screen on here protecting it but there is uh, a repair deep inside there uh, nothing's leaking though <clears throat> i put in the ad that it uh it does it was dripping when i uh, first started up with the uh the hoses on the um on the engine on the lower side i changed the upper one but uh Oops, I guess it helps if you unhook the spring here. Hold on a second. 
I'll lift up this side here. Okay, the uh, the hose on the bottom side of the uh, radiator is dried and can use uh, replacement. It's just leaking a little bit, but actually, um, it's it's got water in it now. I haven't put antifreeze in it. Uh, I drain it in the winter and just put water in it now for the summer. But there's still water in the radiator, and I haven't run this thing in about probably two months, and it's still right at the top, so it's not dripping or anything. Um, there was, as I said in the ad, there is a, a weld right here on the block, okay? And this is the only spot, a little tiny weep there, and that's it. But that needs to be ground down, smoothed out, and uh, it goes from there across to the to the water elbow here behind the carburetor. <clears throat> but it's uh, it's solid. It's got that just that little weep. I would grind it down, maybe V it out, put a little more nickel rod in there, and make it nice again, and smooth, and paint it up, and you couldn't even tell it was there. Serial number, I don't know if you see that or not, it's FM6361, which makes it a 1937. Still has this kerosene manifold on it. Um, they had a lever here to flip over between hot and cold when you were warming up the uh, manifold. You ran on hot to run the kerosene. Then you flip it over, uh, you flip it over to cold to run the gasoline, but it's it's just locked in place like all of them are, and the lever's not even hooked up anymore. But uh, it runs really good and strong and smooth. It starts pretty easy. Uh, air cleaner here has got a smashed in area right here. You're gonna have to hammer back out. But other than that, the the oil cup itself is good, and the the label here is real nice and clean and smooth. Um, but it's just crushed there where they always do from people running into things. Um, and that's pretty much it for the engine. Uh, like I said, it runs really good, um, very strong, and that's why I think it has the high altitude pistons in it. I haven't been able to confirm that. I don't want to take off the head or anything. Uh, here's the uh, the driver's area. Right here you have the, uh, the power takeoff lever. Um, so that's off. There's a big, you can see it or not, it's hard to see with the sun. It says off right there. Over here the PTO is off, and then obviously you step on the clutch over here. And you slide your lever over to on and put it well opposite of off obviously is on and uh, your PTO runs when you let the clutch up okay so we'll leave that off uh, you have your uh, your uh, shifter for the trans here and you've got uh, actually move this out of the way so you can see you got intermediate speed high speed and up in the front you got low you can see that here sun's kind of strong low and then reverses over here um, so you got three speeds forward and, and your reverse. Okay, um, you got your clutch down here on the left hand side. I don't know if you can see that down there or not? There's your clutch. Okay, um, <clears throat> you have on this side. You can see down there. You have your uh, right and left uh, turning brakes. Okay, uh, this lever here is your parking brake. You push the the one uh, brake in, and then you push this in, and it puts your parking brake on. Uh, this lever here is your throttle. You squeeze the handle, and you pull it back, and that locks in the place where you want to stay with your throttle. Here is your magneto, and that's uh, in the full advance position there, and when you shut the tractor off, you just swing it all the way back to retard it, and it shuts the tractor off. Okay, and you usually put it about in the middle to start it so it doesn't kick back on you or less chance of kicking back on you. Oil pressure gauge here, it's got good oil pressure. They have an on-off switch here, a run switch. It's not hooked up because you don't need it because this magneto, uh, you just flip the lever back and it turns off. So somebody might have had a different magneto in there at some point in its life. This, I believe, was your hot cold for your, your manifold, so that's not hooked up. And this is your choke. Okay, if you have to, you know, you can pull the choke actually from the front. I don't know if you can see this here, but there's a rod right there that's moving. Uh, and it goes up to the front of the tractor. Um, so you can pull it out to start the tractor uh, from the front. It's a hand start, obviously. And then uh, while you're sitting here in the seat after the tractor's warmed up, you can just push your choke back in and take it all the way off. Um, and here, the two levers are your your clutch releases for your turning, uh, your steering clutches, okay? So as you're driving along, you pull the left one back and you would start drifting off to the left. And then if you hit your brake, you wanna make a hard turn, you hit your left brake 
and she'll spin really hard. And I'm going to take it out for a little ride so everybody can see what it looks like to drive one of these things. But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, get back here so you can see the whole thing. It's a, it's a pretty big uh, piece of equipment. Uh, really nice. I enjoy it. It's fun to drive. Uh, if you don't have one of these in the collection, you probably should because they're uh, kind of rare. Um, they made th a couple thousand of them. I'm thinking, I don't know, four or five thousand of them over the... Uh, they built them from 31 to 39. <laughs> and uh, this is actually what they called... Uh, I think there's still a little label and it says obviously McCormick Daring on the on the uh, radiator uh, on the side here it says it's hard to read but it said international and Daring and it says track tractor T-R-A-C T-R-A-C T-O-R track tractor uh, and it's a T20 and here used to say T20 pretty much all the uh, the uh, decals are gone now at this point but back here it also said uh, it's so international and endearing. I never saw it written that way, but international daring track tractor. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> that is pretty much that. Um, oh yeah, in the front of this tractor, underneath, I don't know if I can get it here with the with the light or not, but I'll try. There's a big chunk taken out of the, the belly right here. There's a section, you can see it uh, right in the front there. And that's common on these, on these. I've seen about four or five of them already. People try to hook up a chain from underneath here, and then they end up pulling something and ripping this front section out of here. Uh, structurally, it's sound. There's no problems with it. You could if you wanted. There's a place over here with some bull holes on, on each side. Run a strap of steel across, but the engine's mounted to it. It's not going anywhere. And you can tell when it cracked out. It's been like that for a real long time. Either somebody tried to pull something or uh, they came down hard on a rock somewhere going through the woods or something and cracked it out, but I've seen it on quite a bit of them. Uh, you could change the whole pan if you wanted to, but it's underneath. You don't see it. I wouldn't waste my time or my money. She's a good tractor the way she is, but uh, all right, we're going uh, gonna to start it up here now. We'll pull the hood back down. Okay. And... Uh, <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm going to put this exhaust elbow on so it doesn't really fit in here too good because it doesn't belong to this tractor. So I kind of divert some of the sound away here. So anyway, okay, I'm going to try starting it. Um, and uh, what you always want to do here before you start any of these, first thing you do is make sure you're in neutral, okay? Verify you're always in neutral. Put your... Uh, your uh, spark advance about halfway throttle a click or two back all right and uh probably won't need much choke here's your other uh choke lever right here you pull that out from the front you have your starting handle right here hooked up on this wire but uh, i'm gonna put this on the tripod give her a couple pulls and get her started then i'm gonna make another video i'll jump on it we'll take it for a ride all right so bear with me one second while i get the camera on the tripod here and See if we can get it uh, in that direction. She's pretty loud, so it'll probably drown all the sound out. But here we go. Pull the choke out one shot. Keep your thumb back that way. You always want to lock in at the bottom and pull up. Give her a couple pulls. Ready to go. Okay, she's running good. Go around on this side here. Go less noise, I guess. Get a throttle right here and probably drown it out, but there we go.